10, 1.10.17. Monks, I know not of any other single thing that conduces to the confusion, to the disappearance of true Dhamma, as does neg negligence. Negligence indeed conduces to the confusion and disappearance of true Dhamma. Then 1.10.18. Monks, I know not of any other single thing so conducive to the establishment, to the non-disappearance of true Dhamma as earnestness. Earnestness, earnestness indeed conduces to the uh, establishment and non-disappearance of true Dhamma. Uh, these two suttas also tell us uh, that uh, uh, if we want to preserve the true Dhamma, if we want the Dhamma to last, uh, uh, then we should not be negligent. Uh, if we look around, uh, Buddhists uh, are very often seen to be very negligent. Uh, we don't take uh, our religion very seriously. And because we don't take our religion seriously, uh, it conduces uh, to the disappearance. Uh, when we compare ourselves with other religions, we find uh, it's very shameful. Other religions... Is you seldom find, for example, a Christian who does not have a Bible, who does not read his, his Bible regularly, or a Muslim, his Quran. Whereas for a Buddhist, uh, there are so many so-called Buddhists in this country, if we ask them, what is the basic Buddha's teaching? Or what, what are the Buddha's discourses? They can't tell you. And if we count, uh, we ask, uh, how many Buddhists have the Nikayas, uh, the suttas, the discourses of the Buddha? that they should study, uh, look up uh, every day. Then you find uh, so few uh, of our Buddhists uh, have the holy books of the Buddha. And that uh, is not good for our religion. That's why if we are serious, that if we treasure the Buddha's teachings and we want to preserve it for our future generations, uh, we should take the trouble to teach our young. You look at the uh, Muslims. They... Uh, they get their children uh, every day to go to class agama, perhaps spend two hours, as I have seen uh, in uh, certain areas uh, in KL. After going to school, they finish at about one o'clock, they go back, take their lunch, and then by three o'clock, they go to their class agama, and they finish at five o'clock. Every day, the children will go for their class agama. Whereas for our Buddhists, uh, to ask parents uh, to send their children uh, just once a week uh, on a Sunday to go to a Sunday uh, Sunday school. Uh, many parents are reluctant. And that, I think, is very shameful. Uh, if we don't uh, value enough the Buddha's teachings, if we value enough, uh, we should take uh, our religion seriously, as the Buddha has already warned here. I have seen uh, some, uh, for example, my uh, own relatives, uh, some of them are Catholics, uh, and they have a very good practice. Every night after dinner, they get the whole family together after dinner, say. And they spend one hour where they pray for the good, for the peace of the world, for the good of the world. And uh, they read from their Bible. So I don't see why our Buddhists cannot do the same thing. Uh, that we are the, the families uh, should get together, maybe do five minutes or ten minutes of chanting. Uh, and read something from the suttas for 15 minutes or something, and then maybe meditate for 15 minutes. And so you, you very easily you can spend one hour after dinner every night. And that uh, will help uh, to preserve uh, the Buddha's teachings, uh, which uh, to us uh, is invaluable. Now we come to 1.10.33. The Buddha said, Monks, those monks who point out what is not Dhamma as Dhamma, such conduct of theirs is to the loss of many folk, to the misery of many folk, to the loss, the injury, the misery of devas and mankind. Moreover, such beget great demerit and cause the disappearance of this true Dhamma. Uh, that's, that's this sutta. Here the Buddha is saying that there are some monks uh, who do not uh, understand the Dhamma enough so that what is not Dhamma, our Dhamma, what is contradictory to the Buddha's teachings, uh, 
they say it is the Buddha's teachings. Lah. And because of that, nah, they, create, they create great demerit nah, and they cause the disappearance of the true Dhamma. Lah. Now, that's why uh, it is very important for monks uh, to study the teachings of the Buddha, which the Buddha calls in the suttas as Dhamma Vinaya. As I pointed out before, uh, the Buddha never taught the Tripitaka. The Buddha taught the Dhamma Vinaya, as he has said uh, in the suttas. The word Tipitaka or Tripitaka was never spoken by the Buddha. Or the Buddha only said Dhamma Vinaya was taught by him. And the Dhamma in the suttas, uh, in the Anguttara Nikaya, book of the fours, uh, chapter of the fours, uh, the Buddha says that Dhamma is the suttas. And Dhamma, the suttas and the Vinaya are the Buddha's teachings. Uh. So, because uh, some monks are not very familiar with the suttas, uh, what is not Dhamma, what is contradictory to the Dhamma, they say is Dhamma. And so, because of that, uh, they cause, they help to cause the disappearance of this true Dhamma. Now, one point eleven point one, the Buddha said, "Those monks who point out what is not dhamma as not dhamma, such conduct of theirs is to the profit of many folk, to the happiness of many folk, to the good profit and happiness of devas and mankind. Moreover, such monks beget great merit and establish this true dhamma." Now, this sutta here, the Buddha is saying that. A monk uh, should point out uh, what is not Dhamma as not Dhamma. Because uh, in that case, they will profit many, many people. And also, they would help to preserve this true Dhamma. That is why if we know uh, that something that is being taught uh, is not according to the Dhamma, we should speak out to preserve uh, the true Dhamma. Lah. This is not being controversial, but just following the advice of the Buddha. In fact, the Buddha also, during his time, used to speak out against a lot of wrong teachings uh, that were prevalent during his time. And uh, because of that, he was also reviled by a lot of these external sect uh, teachers. Uh. And in one sutta, he said, I do not quarrel with the world. He said, the world quarrels with me. Uh, one who teaches the Dhamma, the true Dhamma, does not quarrel with the world. So here, we would be following the Buddha's footsteps uh, if we try to preserve the true Dhamma by speaking out uh, against what is not Dhamma. Then 1.13, 1.13.7, Buddha said, Monks, I know not of any other single person who so perfectly keeps rolling the supreme wheel of Dhamma set rolling by the Tathagata as does Sariputta. Sariputta, monks, is the one who perfectly keeps rolling the supreme wheel of Dhamma set rolling by the Tathagata. As you all probably know, the Tathagata is another word for the Buddha. La. Tathagata means the dust gone one. This sutta, <coughs> I choose to mention it not because it has some a lot of Dharma content, but because there are some books uh, in, the, in the Mahayana Sutras uh, that seem to say the opposite thing. For example, in the Lotus Sutra, they try to say that the, Buddha, uh, that the Sariputta, being an Arahan, did not understand the teachings of the Buddha. And instead, they try to show that all the Bodhisattvas understood the real teachings of the Buddha. Whereas in this sutta, the Buddha says, uh, nobody uh, keeps the Dhamma wheel rolling so perfectly uh, as Sariputta, which of course is uh, completely opposite to what the Mahayana Sutra say. Now 1.14. In this 1.14, uh, there are many... Um, Disciples of the Buddha who are mentioned, the monks and nuns as well as laymen and laywomen. And the eminent ones are mentioned, those who are, are known for something. So I won't mention all of them, I'll just mention a few of them. Among the monks, the Buddha said, Chief among those of great wisdom is Sariputta. 
Uh, just stop for a moment. So here again, uh, you see, uh, in the Theravada Suttas, uh, the Buddha always praises Sariputta and calls him the greatest in the wisdom. Whereas in the Mahayana Suttas, you find that they are always trying to bring down uh, Sariputta and uh, say that uh, he has very shallow uh, wisdom compared to the Bodhisattva. This is also found in the Vimalakirti Sutra, where uh, Sariputta was uh, sort of uh, put down. Then the Buddha said, Chief of chief among those of supernormal powers is Mahamoglana. Uh, Mahamoglana or Moglana the Great is the best among the uh, monks uh, in the psychic power. Then the Buddha said, Chief of my disciples who are monks, uh, among those who are clairvoyant is Anuruddha. This uh, disciple of the Buddha, Anuruddha, his uh, what they call the heavenly eye, uh, so well was was so well developed that uh, he said uh, he could see uh, the whole world system uh, so clearly, like in the palm of his hand. Uh, looking at the palm of his hand so clearly, he could see the whole world system. Uh, that was uh, Anuruddha. Then the Buddha said, chief of his monks uh, who receive offerings is Sivali. Uh, this Sivali is sometimes a uh, picture of Sivali is found in some Buddhist houses because uh, Sivali is supposed to have a lot of uh, uh, blessings, eh? a lot of merit eh? that he has received so much, uh, that he receives so much offerings. So a lot of people hope that by putting the picture of Sivali in their house, they will also uh, have a lot of merit. Eh? Then the Buddha said, Chief among my disciples, uh, who are of retentive memory is Ananda. So, uh, Venerable Ananda is the one uh, with the best memory. That was why uh, when the Buddha had passed into Nibbana, Ananda was asked by the other, uh, other Arahants uh, to repeat the words of the Buddha in the discourses of the Buddha. About 5,000 discourses, the Venerable Ananda could remember all of them. And then chief among the, the monks uh, who know the Vinaya or disciplinary rules uh, by heart uh, is Upali. Upali was the Buddha's disciple uh, uh, who was foremost uh, in the Vinaya, the uh, dis disciplinary conduct. And then the, the nun disciples, uh, the Buddha said, chief among my women disciples who are nuns of long standing is Maha Pajapati, the Gotamit. Uh, this Maha Pajapati uh, was the Buddha's stepmother. In actual fact, the Buddha's mother's sister. Uh, because uh, it was said that after seven days after the Buddha was born, his real mother passed away. And Maha Pajapati uh, at that time also had her own son, I think by the name of Nanda. And uh, at the same time, he uh, gave milk to his son. Uh, he also provided milk to our Buddha when he was young. And he looked after the Buddha like his own son. Uh, so after the Buddha was enlightened, and when Maha Pajapati became old, he also, she also desired to become a nun. At that time, there were no nuns. And she pleaded with the Buddha, to become a nun, and the Buddha refused her. But Ananda in, uh, interceded on her behalf la, and spoke for her and appealed to the Buddha many times uh, until the Buddha relented. So she was the uh, the nun uh, who, who was the, the longest uh, uh, in robes. Uh, then, uh, not the longest in robes, but the first to be ordained. Then the uh, chief among the nuns of uh, of great wisdom uh, is Kema. Kema was supposed to be the wife of King Bimbisara. And after listening to the Buddha's discourses, uh, she became so um, convinced uh, of the Dhamma that she decided to become a nun, renounce the good life uh, of a queen and took on the life of a beggar nun. 
and because of uh, her great merit, uh, she had the greatest wisdom among the nuns. Chief of the nuns uh, with supernormal powers is Upalavana. Upalavana is uh, the nun uh, with great psychic power. Sometimes in the suttas, uh, it is said uh, um, that Upalavana visited the Buddha at midnight, in the around midnight uh, when nobody else came to see the Buddha. She would come and she'd fly in the air and she'd stand in the air, you know, waiting to, to see the Buddha. And the Buddha knew that she had come, the Buddha would invite her and she'd come and speak to the Buddha. And we find in the Vinaya, in the disciplinary uh, rules for uh, court uh, for monks, uh, that the Buddha generally did not allow uh, uh, nuns, uh, even nuns uh, generally, uh, to see him personally. You know, if nuns generally wanted to see the Buddha, they would have to speak to another monk, and the monk would speak to the to the Buddha, not the nun directly. However. The Buddha allowed arahans, arahan nuns, uh, to come directly to see him, even at uh, midnight. You know. Chief among the nuns uh, who are proficient in the rules of discipline, uh, the Vinaya, is Patachara. Patachara is an, uh, the story of Patachara is found in the Dhammapada commentaries. Uh, it's a very moving story uh, of uh, this Patachara. She was supposed to have been um, come from a wealthy family, but she eloped with a slave, uh, eloped with a slave, and uh, later, uh, after she gave birth to two sons, uh, the, the, she wanted to come back and visit the parents, and along the way, the husband died, and and after that, the the, the uh, two sons also died, so that she was so, she was so full of grief, and she came back to her house, her parents, and also just passed away, so that she was so overcome by grief that she became mad. She became mad for a while and wandered around naked until she came to the Buddha. And then the Buddha helped to restore her sanity. And then after she became a nun and from there she became an Arahant. Now among lay followers, uh, uh, laymen, uh, the Buddha said, chief among his uh, lay followers, uh, who are alms givers uh, is Sudatta, also known as uh, Anatta Pindika. Anatta Pindika, as most of you know, uh, built a huge monastery for the Buddha, about 25 acres monastery, and uh, he provided meals uh, for monks every day. I think a few hundred monks every day, uh, and practically used up all his fortune uh, to support the Sangha. And uh, the other, of course, the other chief uh, uh, benefactor of the Sangha was Visaka. Visaka also uh, gave uh, food, uh, arms food, uh, to monks, uh, I think to the tune of something like 2,000 monks every day. Now, chief among uh, the lay followers uh, who are Dharma teachers uh, is Chitta of Machikasanda. Now, this Chitta, there's a chapter, there's a Sangyutta, on Chitta, in the Sangyutta Nikaya, a whole chapter devoted to Chitta. And we find there uh, the Chitta is, was an Anagami. Chitta was one of those laymen uh, who, although he had a wife or wives, uh, uh, he renounced them to, to keep the eight precepts every day. And he uh, meditated, attained the jhanas, and he became an Anagami. And Chitta was a very interesting person. Some, uh, he would, uh, when he heard of monks coming to his, his area, he would offer food to the monks. And when, when he met the monks uh, and offered them food, uh, he would ask them to teach some Dhamma uh, and, uh, and uh, to, to, to get them to teach them some Dhamma. He would ask some questions about the Dhamma. And if they could not answer the question uh, on the Dhamma, Chitta would teach them the Dhamma instead. So Chitta was a very interesting fellow. Now we come to lay women disciples. Eh? The Buddha said, Monks, chief among my women disciples who are lay followers uh, and who minister to the order, to the Sangha, is Visaka, Migara's mother. This Visaka is also known as Migara Mata. Uh, that means Migara's mat mother. 
Who is Megara? Megara was actually uh, Visaka's father-in-law. Visaka's uh, father-in-law uh, was somebody who was n who did not know the Dhamma, and because the Visaka taught him uh, the Dhamma, that he was so grateful to Visaka uh, that he called uh, Visaka, who was his uh, daughter-in-law, uh, as mother. So that's why his uh, Visaka is known as Migara's mother. Uh, chief of the lay women followers uh, who nurse the sick uh, is Supya. Supya. In the Vinaya, the disciplinary code for monks, we find a story, a real story about Supya. Namely that one day um, one of the monks was sick and Supya used to go to the monastery uh, almost every day uh, to inquire of, of the monk's welfare. And normally, if she saw that a monk was sick, uh, she would try to find out what the monk needed and try to look after the monk's need. Uh. So the Buddha allowed uh, for a monk who is uh, not well uh, to take uh, clear meat soup in the afternoon uh, or in the evening. Uh. So the supiya offered to provide uh, clear meat soup to this monk and this monk agreed. Uh. So she went back and asked the servant or the slave uh, to go to the market and buy some meat. But on that particular day, uh, there was no meat sold in the market because in India it was the custom. Uh, at certain days of the year, uh, they would not uh, sell meat. Uh, they would become vegetarians. So Supya was disappointed. Uh, that she, uh, she thought to herself uh, that she had already promised the monk. And if she did not keep up to her promise, uh, it might it would seem to amount to telling a lie. La. So she was so devoted to the Sangha that she called her maid la, to her room. She took a knife and cut off a piece of flesh from her thigh and gave it to the maid la, and asked the maid to cook and bring it to the monastery for that monk. And the maid did that. La. So um, in the evening, the husband came back from work and normally Supya would come out and greet him. But on that day, Supya did not come out. So the husband went to the room to see uh, Supya and found that she she uh, could not walk uh, because of her condition. And instead of getting angry, the husband was so sort of so happy, you know, that the wife uh, could do such a thing, uh, which very few people uh, could do. Uh. So she she invited the Buddha the next day to her to his house for a meal, and the Buddha came. And then after the meal. The Buddha asked, uh, where was Supya? And, and the husband said Supya was in the room. The Buddha asked her to come out and she, the husband said that it was not, uh, that she could not walk, uh, not convenient for her to come out. Then the Buddha asked her, the husband to help her to come out. And the husband did that. Uh. So when she came out, the moment the Buddha looked at her, uh, the wound was completely healed. And, uh, this is the story of Supya. Uh. Now, 1.15.10, 1 uh, the Buddha said, It is impossible, monks, it cannot come to pass that in one world system, at one at the, at, and the same time, there should arise two arahants who are fully enlightened ones, Samasambuddha. But monks, it is quite possible for a single arahant, a fully enlightened one, to arise. Um... Uh, these, these few suttas here concerning the impossible uh, are also found in Majjhima Nikaya number 115. Uh, and this particular sutta saying that you cannot find two Buddhas, uh, Samasam Buddhas, uh, at the same time uh, in one world system uh, is another one of those suttas that seem to be in conflict with the Mahayana suttas, uh, sutras. For example, in the Earth Store Bodhisattva Sutta, they say that uh, many Buddhas came when the, the Buddha started to preach. Uh, in fact, uh, you can find uh, the Diamond Sutra in the Mahayana Sutras also contradicting uh, this uh, Asto Bodhisattva Sutra because in the Diamond Sutra, the, uh, it is said uh, that after a Buddha has passed into Par Mahaparinibbana, if you expect to see the Buddha again or hear his voice or touch him, etc., then the Diamond Sutra says, uh, that you don't understand the Dhamma and you have gone in, along the deviant path. In other words, once a Buddha has passed into Nibbana, you can never see him again, you can never touch him again, hear his voice, etc. So, uh, 
there's one thing uh, if you uh, if you investigate uh, you find uh, that there are certain sutras uh, that contradict each other uh, it is only in the uh, original uh, four earliest suttas uh, in the pali suttas and uh, the the four nikayas uh, that you find uh, they are very consistent that there is no contradiction one point one point fifteen point twelve uh, the buddha said it is impossible monks it cannot come to pass that a woman should be an arahan who is a samasam buddha but monks it is quite possible for a man to be one and then uh Sutta number 13, 14, 15, and 16, uh, the Buddha says, uh, uh, it is impossible, it cannot come to pass, that a woman should be a universal monarch, or Saka Devaraja, or Mara, Satan, uh, or Brahma. Uh, so here we find uh, in these few suttas, uh, there are five things uh, a woman cannot become, uh, become a Samasam Buddha, cannot become a universal king uh, who rules over the whole world. Uh, cannot become uh, Thikong, uh, Sakadeva Raja, cannot become Mara or Satan, cannot become Brahma. And this again, uh, you find uh, there's a little contradiction in the Lotus Sutra, where it is mentioned that a woman can become a Samasam Buddha. Here also, uh, it, it shows uh, that there is a, a, a little difference between a man and a woman. Sometimes we like to think that a man and a woman uh, are the same, but uh, there is some difference. Uh, 1.17.5 Monks, I know not of any other single thing so apt to cause the arising of wrong view if not yet arisen, or the increase of wrong view if already arisen as antara consideration or antara attention. In him who gives not tara consideration, wrong view if not arisen does arise, or if already arisen, does increase. Then 1.17.6, uh, the Buddha says, Monks, I know not of any other single thing so apt to cause the arising of right view, if not yet arisen, or the increase of right view, if already arisen, as thorough consideration. So here, these two suttas, uh, we find uh, to, uh, to have right view uh, is very important, uh, to have thorough consideration which, as I have mentioned before, is to be able to see uh, the problem <clears throat> or whatever is being considered or contemplated uh, thoroughly uh, with uh, uh, proper attention. Now, to have uh, thorough attention, yoniso uh, manasikara, to be able to contemplate a problem up to the source of that problem, uh, one needs to have a good uh, concentration uh, to have um, uh, to be able uh, to look at a problem uh, and see it uh, to the end, you know. And for that, uh, uh, you you have got you you got to have a fairly good concentration. One point seventeen point seven uh, monks. I know not of any other single thing so apt when body breaks up after death to cause the rebirth of beings in the waste, the woeful plains, the downfall in hell as wrong view. Possess of wrong view, monks, beings are reborn in the waste, the woeful plains, the downfall in hell. Then 1.17.8 Monks, I know not of any other single thing so apt when body breaks up after death to cause the rebirth of beings in the happy lot in the heaven world as right view. Possess of right view, monks, beings, beings are reborn in the happy lot in the heaven world. So here we can see why wrong view uh, and right view, uh, the, the, the result uh, of having wrong view and the result of having right view. And that's why it's so important uh, to have right view. Because if we have wrong view, uh, it brings us into the woeful plains. Uh. So to have right view, uh, we have first to have to 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 have thorough consideration, uh, concentration on mind. The other thing is, we should uh, if we ha have the good fortune uh, to be able to listen to the sadhamma, the true dhamma, 
then uh, which can which can bring us to to have right view uh, then we are very very fortunate it is uh, if we look into the suttas uh, the buddha said uh, he contemplated the last 91 kapas 91 ages of time uh, one age of time one world cycle uh, is extremely long the buddha said it is so long a time uh, that it is uh, quite hard to imagine how long it is in fact, the Buddha says to give you an idea of how long a world cycle is. Uh, the Buddha said, you imagine a cube, a rock, uh, which is seven miles, uh, a yojana, which sometimes translated, uh, 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 said to be seven miles or sometimes ten miles. Uh, seven miles uh, long, seven miles wide and seven miles high. Uh, a, a cube, uh, seven miles. Uh, and you, one, once in a hundred years, uh, you take a soft piece of cloth, huh, you wipe it once. And after 100 years, you wipe it once again. How long will it take huh, before that you can wear away that rock huh, just by wiping it with a soft cloth? Huh? The, the, the time is so long huh, that it's quite unimaginable. And the Buddha said he, he looked into the past for 91 world cycles and he only found six Buddhas, you know, six Buddhas, which means that uh, one Buddha appears huh, in more than 10 uh, 10 world cycles on the average. Uh, so, to be able to listen to the true Dhamma now uh, is something uh, uh, very, very fortunate uh, for us. Then 1.18.1 uh, uh, Monks, one person born into the world is born to the loss of many folk, to the discomfort of many folk to the loss, discomfort and sorrow of devas and mankind. What person, one who has wrong view, he of wrong, of distorted view, leads many folk astray from the, from righteousness or the right path huh, and plants them in unrighteousness or the wrong path. This is the one. The 1.18.2 Monks, one person born into the world is born for the profit of many folk, for the happiness of many folk, for the profit, comfort and happiness of devas and mankind. What person, one who has right view, he who has right view leads many folk from the wrong, from the wrong path and plants them in the right path. This is the one. So you see, if you follow somebody with the wrong view, then it is very unfortunate. And this person who has wrong view, he is born to cause a lot of pain to a lot of people. But a person who is born with right view, he benefits many, many people.